So here's a quick video to show you how to use a Spock with existing D-Packs. So we just go to D-Pack Assets and let's grab something. I'm going to grab this panel Y and I'm going to load that to the scene. And of course now you can see we've got two different panel Y D-Packs loaded in here. And so as we're doing that, now I'm just going to select this object and let's just go ahead and create a new collection and I'm going to just add one thing and I'll say this panel Y top and I'll pack it and it'll take a little time but we'll get this done. Now when it comes through it looks something like this. Let's go ahead and pack it differently so I can get the top. It's going to be a little bit differently. Yeah keep going. There we go. There's one. Okay so you're something like this. This is certainly not a material that we can use right. So what we want to do is we want to be able to come in here and just and we're going to go into our kit ops and we want to use this material that I posted and I'm going to just say actually let's just take it to this to any other object I want to say uh, add that material so I'll add it to this background object here so there it is okay now I want to go in here and I want to map this to this so the way to do that is we're going to go into Spock and we're going to go down here go down here and we're going to go into tools and I'm going to hide that so it's not so busy and what I want to do is I want to replace what this material is. And this material is CW Gen Color, right? So we go over here, CW Gen Color. So I'm going to replace CW Gen, Gen Color. There it is right there. And I want to find that one we just added, which is CW Gen Material. And then when we click this button, we're going to replace every instance of it over here. And then you have to click off of it, and you'll see that it works. Okay, now that that's done, let's look at this material because it's really not a good material. It may be good for, for distant scenes, but it's not going to be good for kind of closer up things. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to go in and I'm going to disable this normal. Actually, I can just go in here. I can disable this or I can just go to normal uh, strength and just say zero uh, here. Okay, and that'll get rid of that normal. We still have a little shadow there, so I'm going to go this top side mix turn this completely off. So now I can adjust any of these colors I want. If I don't want this gray to be quite that dark, I can, you know, light, I can bring it down like this so you can see what, what's going on. Okay, so now once that's done, and you can see we also have some lights around here on stuff and, and there's all kinds of interesting things going on. So now that that's done, I'm gonna come over to this object material and I'm gonna, with Node Wrangler installed, remember that's from the preferences, we're just gonna grab this and Control Shift click and that just gives us the color. That's just the base color of everything. If I do it one more time, this is gonna give us the metallic. Black is off. So I wanna make some of these things metallic. So I'm gonna go over here, turn metallic on so that we know that, you know, that, that it's gonna be on, set it to one. Uh, now, everything, now everything's metallic. And what I wanna do is I wanna create a threshold here. So I can just drag this up and I'll start to see that some things are metallic and some aren't. White is metallic, remember, uh, the other colors are not. Now remember these square things, maybe we want those to be metallic, so I'm gonna invert those. And then you can see they are now, they're, they're metallic. But actually, I'm not gonna invert them because most of the time you're probably not gonna do that. So I'll just show you, but that's how you would do that. Now I'm gonna click, now remember these square ones are not metallic, right? Uh, and let's, let's make the threshold just a little different. Let's just make it, I wanna have just a few things metallic. There we go, just like that. So those are the metallic things. I'll click on with this selected. I'll control shift click again, and that again, you know, hardwires that. So I can see I'm seeing just the roughness before we see the metallic. Now we're seeing the roughness. So as you can see, when black means that things are not rough at all, they're very shiny. Well, I want them to be more rough than that. And so, first thing I'm going to do with roughness is invert it because the black stuff is the shiny stuff, and uh. That's the uh, that's the plastic stuff. I want the metal to be more shiny, so I'll invert it like this. So now that it's invert, uh, most everything is is dull. So I'll push up the contrast, and as I push up the contrast, you'll start to see that it comes out. So now that that metal stuff is going to get shinier, and the rest of the stuff will be dull, something like that. And I can I can play with the brightness too if I want to. I can I can you know play around in this area as well. And then once that's done, I can just come over here and click over here and then control shift click and I'm gonna get my final material. And you can see the shiny stuff that's metal and then the, the dull stuff that's dark. And it's, you know, it works pretty good. And now if I really wanna add just a little more detail to it, I'll just come up here into this 
right here. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit. Now, watch what happens. I'm going to add just a little tiny bit of the side mix. Just, just a tiny bit. See? So it's just starting to get just a little pattern on here. Just but enough that's going to, it's not detracting too much, but uh, but it works. So anyway, that's how you would use existing deep hacks with Spock. Hope this helps, and uh, we'll see you online. Thanks. Bye.